Today on 700 Club Nigeria, a revealing chat with the producer of one of CBN Africa's TV programs. Plus, a missionary's tale of miracles and wonders as she journeys across Africa, showing today on 700 Club Nigeria. Hi there. It's a beautiful day to be tuned. Oh, okay. So, tuned to 700 Club Nigeria. Now, mm -hmm. so I get it. I, it just reminded me that I, I, I was tuning to some radio station, <laughs> you know, to, to listen to some program, actually. Well, is it, tuned still in vogue? Still, it's still fine. In use? I, I think so, because I think the word tuned is central to broadcasting, because mm. you're either tuning into a, a radio program or you're staying tuned on a television program. I get so. it. I mean, for me, it's like, okay, thank you for joining us, you know. It's a radio show. It's a TV show, by the way. I mean, so well, like you said, it's a broadcast term. So and whichever way it works fine for fine. me, it That's really okay. works fine for me. But it's always a great pleasure to bring your way real stories that will encourage, inspire, and enlighten you. Again, Susan, I like the word enlighten. <laughs> yeah, enlighten just reminds you. Okay, something new is about to happen. Mm -hmm. uh, you're about to be enlightened on something. For instance, yeah, I'm just about to learn something new. Yes, it's a learning process where your eyes are open. Your ears are open and mm -hmm. so let the learning begin Absolutely. now imagine leaving your family loved ones and the life you know behind going to a strange land and starting all over for a cause you believe in that will require a lot of courage to do right well you could say that doris hockett is one lady with an abundance of courage here is her story my name is doris hockett and our ministry is hockett international ministries I'm a missionary evangelist uh, since 1966. I was born and raised in a very big city in America, and as I was growing up, I thought, I'm going to be a teacher. I want to be the best teacher in the whole world. But I had a real heart for missions. I was from a church where missionaries came quite often, especially missionaries from Africa. And um, God just changed my plans. and. I knew in my heart God wanted me in Africa, so that was, that was it. My husband was preaching as a teenager and we were still in high school when we met. We married very young and we went through Bible college, got degrees, pastored a church, did evangelistic ministry. We've ministered all over Nigeria, countries all over Africa. We've ministered in India and we saw tens of thousands of young people's lives change. This was what God had called us to do, is to just give our lives, give our time, give our love, give our all, and we were excited. When we came to Africa, it was just the two of us. We had wanted a child, but hadn't had one. After we waited 12 years, we almost gave up several times, but God is good, and He gave us the desire of our heart. Our son, a miracle son, was very much a part of our ministry. He traveled everywhere with us. I taught him all of his school lessons. We took them with us, and I praise God for him. And we've prayed with many, many others through the years to have babies, and we have seen miracles. We have seen even a, a couple married 32 years have a child. Yeah, my husband was my best friend, my soulmate. We laughed together, we played together, we traveled together, we raised our son together. We shared the same goals. Uh, we had been married almost 54 years and together all the time in ministry. God made us a unique team where we both ministered and shared and worked together so much. We had often joked and laughed and said, if anything happens to one of us, the other will carry on. And it fell on me to carry on. It was really hard, and yet I knew what God wanted me to do. And my prayer was, God, put somebody there to help me every step of the way, and He has. Amazing people to step up to say, can I help you? And Praise I praise God, I'm Jesus. still here. God has been so faithful. God, God has been good all these years to just uh, open doors, open hearts, and uh, I have so many invitations to travel and minister. I, I could never, ever get to all the different countries. I've written 15 books. Some have been translated into different languages in different countries. So I just 
praise God for all these years as a missionary. Praise the Lord for people who pray for me and God keeps me going. When we give God our best, God gives us His best. And when we have problems, I've often said, every problem has an expiry date. God is very faithful and uh, Jesus is the master problem solver. And the Bible is the original problem solving book. Awesome. Oh, wow, Patrick. Awesome, awesome. That is one awesome. super duper couple. I admire awesome. their courage. Awesome, <laughs> awesome. What an inspiring story. I mean, really, just living, really. living your home, mm -hmm. packing everything and just going to strange land yeah. and settling in. Mm -hmm. giving everything you have and say, look, I'm here to serve. Is that something you could do, Patrick? I mean, would you go that mile? Ah, there is, uh, Susan, you're putting me on the spot, but um, <laughs> I'm not sure what I can do, if I can mm -hmm. do what Doris and her husband did, but um, I, I must say I'm inspired mm -hmm. by the singular act of the fact that they, they gave, gave up everything yeah. to just come and just do the work of missionary. And um, you can tell from the testimony that a lot of people have been touched and be blessed yeah. by their ministry, obviously. Mm. Um, I'm encouraged. Yeah, it's so encouraging because um, we're selfish as human beings innately and leaving our comfort zones and all that we know to be normal, to go to someplace you don't even know what's going to happen to you next. But I know that this sacrifice that they've made is one that will live for generations to come. And, you know, the seeds that they have sown will live long after they are gone. Absolutely. Yeah. And, you know, you may just be somewhere at a point in your life where you need to make certain sacrificial decisions um, on certain moves you need to make in life in terms of a, even a career choice. It could even be uh, just giving up something that you've treasured all your life. Mm -hmm. uh, just like Doris and her husband did. Uh, I ask that you open up your heart and allow God minister to you today and, and release yourself and let God be himself in your life. And as you do that, as you take that step of faith, believing God for that decision, he will bring forth from you a testimony that the world will live to talk to about for the rest of eternity. You know, if you're that person, just join us as we pray yeah. this prayer. Father in heaven, we thank you for that man, that woman watching right now. Yes, Lord. And burdened heavily, heavily burdened yeah. to make a certain decision, to take a step of faith on a particular trajectory in life. Lord, I ask that you make that decision easy for them. Yes, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Heavenly Father, I ask for the strength and courage of Doris upon my brother and my sister right now. Yes, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Lord, they said they waited for years for their first son to come, but he did come. And many more children were given birth to as a result of their ministry. Lord, I ask Jesus. that you make it easy for somebody today. Yes, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Lord, take away fear. Amen. Just take away that fear. I speak courage into your heart right now. Yes. Take that step of faith yes. and be bold. Mm -hmm. Because he said to you, I will never leave yeah. nor forsake you. Yes, Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Now, if you just prayed with me now and would like someone to talk to in confidence about anything that may be bothering you, please call us on the numbers on your screen right away. We're here to counsel and to pray with you anytime, any day. Okay. Still to come on 700 Club Nigeria, an interview that you wouldn't want to miss. Not even I would want to miss this interview, I tell you. While I was in the private hospital, the man took advantage of me and raped me. I was so much in pain that I couldn't explain. It happened again and again and again. I hated him with all my life. It took me time, it took me years, it took me effort to forget. And I told myself to forge on, I had to forgive him, I had to let go. No matter how much the devil abused my, my body, my physical body, I was gonna love God until I leave this world. I have found that place where nobody can take away my joy from. I've come to know the love of God beyond normal. That's knowing that when I stick with God, my life is made.
Welcome back. I am especially excited about the next few minutes. Why? I'll tell you why. Because I have with me in the studio one of our very own. She's the producer of one of CBN Africa's TV programs, One Cubed Niger. It is so good to see women using all forms of media to make huge impacts in the lives of young men and women across Africa. I have to mention here that she was the very first producer of 700 Club Nigeria. She's my friend, my sister, she's a colleague. Angel, it's so good to have you here in 700 Club Nigeria. Thank you, Susan. Look at you, girl, all glammed up. I'm trying to be like Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> I'm used to seeing Angel in trousers and T-shirts and work boots and a camera, but today she's a guest on the show. So tell me, what does it feel like to be on the other side of the camera? Mm. <laughs> I guess it's payback time. Yeah. <laughs> But I'm glad to be here. I'm honored to be here. Mm. Thank you, Susan. How does it feel to be back on the program that you were the, it was the 700 Club Nigeria was your baby. You were yes, the very first producer. And I remember the first few episodes, I was a makeup <laughs> artist. <laughs> yes, you were. It was fun. It was great. It was awesome. And this is like a walk in the park. We had to take like take 13, 14, 15, because we didn't have a teleprompter. We had to do like 21 takes for some episodes. It was fun, it was great. We shot outdoors, it mm -hmm. was fantastic. Um, it, was, yeah. it was a rare privilege to start something new, being that young, when I, when I was producing the 700 Club. It was fun and mm. we, it was like, we're always praying and yeah. it was awesome. And yeah. we walked by faith because yeah. the weather had to be right. Everything had to be right. How many years ago was this? How long ago was, was the very first show, you know? 2006. Wow. Yep. Yeah. That yep. is a long time. That's, That's 12 years. A dozen years. <laughs> <laughs> so tell us how you got into media in the first place. As a child, mm. you know, did you always dream to be on television? Did you nope. intend to work in the media? Nope. <laughs> but funny enough, I grew up on TV because both my parents worked in NTA at the time. And my mom used to say, she said when I was a baby, she used to have my baby caught on her desk, mm. producing, scripting, and she would have me in the pram, shooting and directing and doing all of that. So I grew up on TV, but I never dreamt I'll be producing TV. At home, I remember when I was like seven or eight and the news was going on or a show was going on, I was saying, take the, change the show, camera two, camera two. And my mom says, huh, camera two. <laughs> there are people who don't even know that it's time to change the camera. So it was that way for me. But um, their pay wasn't really fantastic. So I used to say, they can't pay me. I won't work on TV. I wanted to be a missionary. I just wanted to be in some village somewhere. I wanted to be able to go to Sudan and preach the gospel and get so saved. So I never expected to be on TV. But everything I put my hand to do, I did well. So I remember in 99, I was in my room and I said, Lord, what would you have me do? I don't want to do everything well and then get to heaven and say, Angel, the one thing I sent you to do, you didn't do well. Mm -hmm. And he said, I'm going to use you through media to touch the world. I said, media, how? Mm -hmm. And it's been how many years? And here mm -hmm. I am, and I'm glad the Lord has been using me yes, to do yes. what I love to do. Mm -hmm. And it's still missionary work, yeah. <laughs> getting so saved yeah. and making a difference in lives. Yeah. And, I, I was about to ask you, how many years have you been you know, in the media practice? But I can see you have been since from <laughs> babyhood, you know, sitting in the pram on mommy's desk. That is fantastic. But all these years, Angel, tell me, um, what were the salient lessons you learned in life? You know, I'm sure there's been good, there's been bad. Just off the top of your head, a few of the lessons share with us that you have learned. It pays to obey God. It pays to follow his lead and do what he says you should do whether it makes sense or not. Um, everyone may think you should go in a particular way, but God says, hey, angel, this is what I want you to do. You may butt heads with people mm -hmm. because they don't believe in what you want to do, yeah. but as long as you know it was God who said, go ahead and do it, go ahead and do it. And in the end, they'll catch up. They'll realize, oh, it was really God talking to you all along. And um, that's one lesson I've learned. I've learned that you don't compromise on quality. Right. I remember, if you can remember, the first, um, we shot 17 episodes, the first the 17 first episodes time. of 700 Club <laughs> Nigeria, and we're excited. And then we sent them to the US for reviews, and they said we had to redo like 12 episodes. Yeah. And we're like, 
oh, we're wasting so much money. And I said, nope, it has to be excellent. And we have to do it excellently mm -hmm. well. And so it also bursts that myth that says it's Christian, so anything can go. Right. Anything can go. Yeah. Just because God is an excellent God. He didn't give us a half-baked world. Mm -hmm. We have a world with a perfect sky, perfect ground, perfect sun, perfect right. everything. So why give give less than the best because you think it's Christian. Yeah. So I learned that the fact that it's Christian doesn't mean we should manage right. or right. use the standard. You know, it's so much fun when we're talking and we're on set, but we really have to run because time is not on our side. Mm -hmm. Now, let's talk about children for, for a moment. Is it possible, you know, seeing how technical media is, is it something we can imbibe in our children, you know, from the start, or it's something that they discover on their own? Well, you can't go wrong giving your children all they can get. Um, I already teach my children how to frame shots, teach them rule of thirds. They may never do media, but they know what a good shot is when they see one. And um, give them the gifts, equip them, and they'll walk their own path. And God may say, hey, go and be a builder, be an architect or something else, but you've done your path. You've given them what they need to learn. And who knows, they'll get some principles from media that will make them a better architect or doctor or whatever it is true. they have to be. So true. Now, we see a lot of media personalities, you know, they're popular, their shows are everywhere, and after a while, they're just like, poof, extinct. What's, you know, the cause of this rise and fall, and is there anything we can do about it, being in the industry? I can't tell what the cause is for everyone, <laughs> but I can say maybe there's some principles. You know, there's one thing... Um, Good, good looks can get you there, yeah. but character will keep you up there. So they may have gotten there because they were creative, but somewhere along the line, character went, went um, or there are different, different reasons why we start. Uh, sometimes we think, they say the, the enemy of, of good, of, of the best, is good. Yeah. And so you were good yesterday, and then you didn't develop yourself. You didn't improve on right. what you had done yesterday. And then someone comes, watches you, and they say, hey, this is a standard. I want to beat this. I want... And then you're happy being good. Yeah. And then someone comes and says, hey, I'm not going to be better. I'm going to be better than the best. Yeah. And then you're like wondering why. There are so many things. Okay. And then you can't rule out leaning, listening to what God says. And okay. if he wants to change your show on the day of the show, be bold enough to say, hey, guys, we need to do this and do what God says and it will work out well. All right. So one last word. There is, you know, people want to be famous. They want to look great. They want to be on TV. What word do you want to say, you know, to a young people out there who wants this life? You can have it, you can be it, you can do it, but listen to God. Don't do it because everyone says it's cool to do it. Don't do it because everyone thinks it's the best thing to do. Do it because you're convinced, you love it, you're excited about it, and God says you can do it. And trust me, you're unstoppable. There are no limits. All right, girl, the time is up. We have to wind up now, but I'm not going to let you go without you queuing us to the next segment. So, hey, take it off. Um, okay. <laughs> Don't go away just yet. There's so much more coming on 700 Club Nigeria. Just listening to Angel now. Yeah. From a baby in a pram. <laughs> <laughs> she got production in her veins, man, I from why she was I a tell baby. You, I tell you. And Angel, I have known her um, since her days in NTA. Yeah. Um, we worked together on a couple of programs, so she's always been that. So I'm yeah. not surprised she's where she is today. Yeah. Uh, so stay in the cause, really. Yeah. When you know what God has, the path God has called you to, just stay with it and believe Him. He will always direct. Your path for he you. definitely will. But you know, sometimes when we start and we don't see the results that we have in our heads, mm. it's so easy to deviate. I'm like, hey, it's not working. Mm -hmm. It's not working. But mm. I found out that if you put in the effort day after day after day, it's only a question of time. In little or no time, people are going to, you know, see all the glory. Mm. Awesome. Absolutely. Um, so, uh, Beauty Baham writes to us. She says, I have been watching 700 Club Nigeria for the past six years, and I really appreciate the counselors and their commitment to pray for me whenever I call. 
Sometime in 2018, May to be precise, I had severe pains around my neck. And by the time I got to the hospital, my BP was 190 over 100. I was admitted for eight days. I could not even walk. But your heartfelt prayers and show of care helped me pull through. Right now, I am completely whole. Amen. Awesome. That is so amazing. And we pray for more remarkable things to happen in the lives of all our viewers. Mm -hmm. And please feel free to share them with us via phone calls or through direct messages on any of our social media platforms. 700 Club Nigeria will return shortly. Every day, Agnes sits by a small fire frying bean cakes to sell to neighbors. She doesn't earn much, but it's usually just enough to provide for her family. One morning, she suddenly felt intense pain all over her body. I couldn't move. I had to lie down to get some relief. She tried to work, hoping the pain will go away. When it only got worse, she knew she needed pain medication. Even though my body hurt so much, I didn't have enough money to buy pain relievers. Then Agnes heard about a free medical clinic CBN was holding in her village. There, she was diagnosed with a form of arthritis and given the medication she needed, free of charge. The doctors came when I needed them the most. I was so relieved when they told me I didn't have to pay for my medication. After taking the medication, Agnes felt so strong. She came back the next day with her frying pan and bean floor ready to sell bean cakes. As she packed up to live, we gave her enough bins to not only keep her business going, but to expand it and get ahead. How can I thank you enough, CBN? I am so grateful. We sincerely appreciate the effort of all our 700 Club partners. All that we are able to achieve is because of you. And we say thank you. Thank you indeed, because Agnes is only one out of all the numerous men, women, and children that your selfless financial contributions have given hope to. With time, we hope to bring you more stories of the lives you have changed in, different, in, in recent times. Every year, with the help of our partners, the Christian Broadcasting Network humanitarian team provides free basic health care, portable water to rural dwellers, and those living in hard-to-reach areas. We also provide scholarships to orphans, training in marketable skills to women. So why don't you partner with us today? Be a bearer of positive change in our society. Get in touch with us today through the information displayed on your screen and find out how you can become a partner to give many more people a fresh start. Yes, indeed. You know, as always, we have to say a goodbye now. Mm -hmm. Not to worry. You can keep in touch with us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. We'll be glad to hear from you. Until we come your way again, we leave you with this beautiful new song by Kel Vocal titled, No One. And goodbye. God bless you. Who can love me like you love me? Who can save me like you save me? Who can lift me like you lift me? Jesus. Who can bless me like you bless me? Hey, yeah. Who can love me like you love me? Oh, who can save me like you save me, Jesus? Yeah. Who can help me like you do, God? Hey, no one, no one but you. Maker and my Lord, you are my keeper and my shield. Yeah. No one, no one, no one. You live inside.
Yeah.